everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Keisha King Show, where we discuss faith, culture, and politics, all geared towards the next generation. As you can see, today I have a very special guest and a first on the Keisha King Show. I have an in-person studio guest. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to Miss Kion Michael. Well, hello. Thank <laughs> you so much for having me. This is amazing. Thank you. I am thank your very you. first active live guest. Yes, you are. I feel special. You are special. <laughs> she is special. She's very special to me. So let me just give you guys a little background of Kion and I. So in the during the 2020 campaign, uh, I worked as the regional engagement coordinator for Black Voices for Trump. Well, there was also another special person who was an advisory board member of Black Voices for Trump, Miss Kion Michael. So, at, it, you know, our, our relationship uh, developed very early, um, way past colleagues. And when I say very special person to me, truly very special, she and her husband actually knew my father who passed away in 2019. And once we discovered that, happier to have you here as my first in-studio guest and just so honored to have oh, you in my wow. life as a prayer partner, prayer warrior, as a confidant, as a friend, as family, as just an incredible person. And I am honored to support you in your campaign as you run for wow. state house in the free state of Florida. So, I will let Kion give you her own background. There you go. Oh, wow. What an <laughs> intro. I, I am just overwhelmed and grateful. And thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's great to be here. And it's great to be here running for office at this time. It's yeah. an incredible time in our nation's history. It is a very uh, pivotal time in mm -hmm. our history. And we all know how important it is that we get it right. We have got to get it right. We know what happened yep. in the 2020 election. Some of us, most of us, I think, know we are both conservative women. Mm -hmm. We are both what they are calling oxymorons. Can oh, yes. That? <laughs> I forgot. So let's see. So let's, 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 so we got domestic terrorists. Oh my goodness. We have oxymorons. Up. Let's see. If we take it back, we're deplorable. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah. I think Mega, we're, we would call mega, super mega. Super mega. Oh, ultra oh, yeah. mega. Ultra mega. Is that yeah, a bad or a good thing? I don't know. It's good for me. <laughs> That's what you want to call me. Right. I mean, it's just incredible. The labels that are just adding on I and building know. up. And we are just being who God has created us to be. Mm -hmm. And we are definitely uh, fully awake of what's going on. And mm -hmm. um, we, we are not apologetic. No. Because... It is what it is. That's I mean, right. we know that uh, for far too long, our culture, our race has been um, under the ownership, practically, of the Democrat Party. Yeah. And um, to none of our advantage. It's, yeah. it's always been where uh, it's at the expense of we have failing schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, and this has been going on. It was going on when I was a child. Mm -hmm. I was a product of busing. Uh, right here in Jacksonville, Florida, right mm. here in Duval. Hey! <laughs> to plug that in there. Yeah. And they figured out quickly it didn't really work mm -hmm. because you take a child um, in their prime of their, their life when you're right in middle school going into high school, you're busing them from their neighborhood, from their communities, everybody that they know and everything that they know, yeah. and all the way on the other side of town, yeah. all in the the idea of making education available equal ed education available yeah uh, desegregating the school right but it's not good for the child i don't think they did a, a good enough study to know how it really affected um, yeah. the child per se and i can remember being just devastated because no one that i i was familiar with uh that was from my neighborhood were in my schools with me mm. because somehow they just selected certain students Oh, wow. I don't know about Lotto. I don't know how they yeah. did it, but it, it really wasn't a very popular idea. It wasn't a good idea. So that that's a, I know this is kind of wasn't the topic that yeah. we thought, but that's interesting. So when that happened, so we, we, you know, on the conservatives, we always push for school choice, mm -hmm. but it is very parent controlled. We choose the school we want our child to go to. We yes. choose 
you know, the, 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 the school we choose the, you know, we, we, we choose how we want that to look for our family. But this sounds like it was chosen by the state. It was chosen by the state. That is so, that's not school choice. No. That is for school. I mean, public school is for schooling anyway. It's compulsory it sure school, which, you know, I can get into all of that, yeah. but <laughs> don't get me going on that one. But that is interesting that, um, the busing was a, it, it looked like it was a liberal thing, but it was actually a very heavily state push thing. It really was, and, and they thought that it was going to work. Yeah. So, you know, we look at what you guys are championing right now mm -hmm. um, with Moms for America, and thank mm -hmm. you for doing that, because mm -hmm. there is nothing more precious, more important to us than our children. Yeah. And that's the bottom line. Our children is what makes the final decision. Where, where will we live? Mm -hmm. What companies are we going to work for? Yeah. You know, um, really every avenue of our of our uh lives yeah. is really geared towards our children how Absolutely. we spend our money how we're going to save our money how yeah. will we invest our money everything is focused around our children as it should be right so there's nothing more important than our our precious resource mm -hmm. our preciousness of of ourselves mm -hmm. our children yeah and so thank you for what you're doing but it does have so many layers to it yeah like the busing for instance yeah. I mean, you're I about gener a different generation mm -hmm. and i think by your generation they figured out it didn't work so we yeah. had to come up with something else and your generation i i think is the same with my children's generation mm -hmm. where now they have the magnet schools mm -hmm. um so they, Targets, you know, magnets. here we are with yeah. all these different <laughs> type of uh, ideas mm -hmm. of how can we better provide education yeah. for families. Yeah. And now we're at the train wreck, which is, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's nothing good that is um, coming out of public for public schools. You know, I on my show <clears throat> last week, I had Michael Strong on, and he told us about how ten percent of American public school children are sexually abused. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like, and, and, and I thought, okay, wow. how, like what does that mean really in numbers? So I looked it up, so there's 49 million children in public school. So that means there's 4.9 or 5 million children that are being sexually assaulted every year. That's a lot. Five million. That's a lot. I didn't, you know, I didn't. Wow. I didn't. Yeah, it's just overwhelming. When you hear the number, it's like, wow. It's incredible. It's incredible. So, yeah, our public school system has is an utter failure on so many levels. The protection of the children, the academic, the, you know, from top to bottom, it just needs to go. But that's my opinion, and y'all already know that. But um, speaking of children... I want to you to if you would uh, share your story about oh, sure. your own family and your children and sure. Well, I am from right here, as I said earlier, from Jacksonville, Florida, born and raised. Um, loved it here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't even lock our doors at night. Uh, raised right on in the Springfield area, right on the north side of town, mm -hmm. and and then you know you didn't have to worry about. When you went out to play, no one bothered you. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to worry about shootings or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it was very foreign to Jacksonville to even have what's going on now with mm -hmm. the crime rate increased like it is. It's, it's alarming. Yeah. Uh, and I married a military guy, my husband Bobby. We traveled all around the U.S. Uh, doing his 20-year service. And it was, it was good. It was really yeah. good to expose our children to that. Um, and then we came back to Jacksonville because there's no place like home. Yeah. And we were in Chicago prior to coming to Jacksonville. I knew I didn't want to live there. <laughs> <laughs> Way too cold. Yeah. And so um, we came back here and in 2007. We we're living our lives just regular parents, just mm -hmm. regular family. Uh, I was one of those moms that I did not really want to let my kids out of my sight. Mm -hmm. um, we had strict rules. You just couldn't do what you wanted to do in our home. Yeah. Uh, we, God was always first and centered, mm -hmm. and, and we raised our children knowing that our faith is the foundation of who Amen. we are. Amen. And Amen. Um, we, we stood on that, and we believed, and we yeah. functioned as, a, as a, the everyday, everyday American family. Yeah. Um, and 
in 2007, our, our middle child, Brandon Randolph Michael, was on his way to go cash his, his paycheck. He had just left the house, mm -hmm. and I was like every other mom, you know, I'm telling Brandon, you need to make sure you need to eat some oatmeal. I made oatmeal for you, because <laughs> that's how we are. Yeah. That's and he's like, oh, mom, you know, I'll get something out the vending machine at, at work. And I said, well, I love you. And he said, love you too, mom. Mm -hmm. And he was putting his belt on across the street, yeah. going to get in his car. And um, those were the last words said I said to him. And I, I'm grateful now, because what more powerful words? Right. to have been spoken because not knowing that that would be the last time I would actually mm -hmm. see him alive. He left totally healthy, uh, engaged to be married. He had his whole future ahead of him. And on his lunch break, um, he just was going to cash his paycheck. And what got me into politics is Brandon was hit and killed by twice deported illegal alien right mm -hmm. here in Jacksonville. And we're not what they would have considered a border town. Right. Um, at that time in Jacksonville, Florida. So as a parent, your life is just turned upside down because the unthinkable is now happened. Yeah. Um, and not knowing really, how are you gonna survive this? How yeah. am I gonna, God, how do I get up the next day? How, yeah. how do you move on as a family? Yeah. Um, as a mom, part of who you carry is gone. Yeah. Um, no warning, just, just not here. Yeah. And uh, not only dealing with the shock of that, but then because the illegal got out of the car and um, did nothing to help our child, and he refused to admit that he was even driving, now we have to, we're forced to uh, go to a trial. Because right. the state now had to prove that he was behind the wheel. So now as we're hit with a double whammy right. as parents. And so he was only given two years, and he was deported two for the years third time. Murder. Two years. Two years. Um, and they didn't arrest him immediately, which is really incredible. It's incredible because they knew that he had been in Jacksonville for at least seven years. Wow. Never had a driver's license, was stopped prior, months prior to um, killing our son uh, for driving without a license. He was, they just gave him a citation and let them go. So our system failed numerous times. Wow, wait a minute, I'm sorry. So they gave him a citation? Yes. When they knew that at, at the very least he was highly suspected of being the murderer of your son? Well, no, this was before he hit Brandon. Oh, okay, okay. Before he hit and killed Brandon. Mm -hmm. uh, he was driving around. Oh, okay. And, and he would just get a citation and, and they, they would stopped just let him go. And they figured out he didn't have a driver's license and they just gave him a citation and let him go. And then months prior is he's still driving around. He was working somewhere. Mm -hmm. We don't know where. Um, and he was going to buy paint mm -hmm. and ran into our child because right. what people don't realize that push these, these ideas of illegals having driver's licenses is that uh, they're probably from a different country. Mm -hmm. They're not familiar with our, our road signs. Right. They may not be able to read our language. Mm -hmm. And they're driving around. Yeah. I used to live in Miami. <laughs> Trust me. They have, uh, the, the people that come in over there, they have connections in the DMV. I know mm -hmm. that this, for this to be true because mm -hmm. living in Miami, where there's a, a high Hispanic population, um, not you know, the, the majority of them are legal, but the people that come over uh, who aren't, they come over and she's right. I've seen it, been on the road. You can tell that they don't, you can see it in their eyes when they're driving around. They don't, they're, they're, they should not be on the road. They should mm -hmm. not. And so, yeah, for, for people, for our government to say, ah, well, it's okay to put us in danger, yes. to put American citizens in danger. I mean, what kind of what kind of America is that? It's not America first for sure. It's America last it's because America last. you know you are you are now impacting that person's life, their family. Yeah. I mean, to watch our children go through uh, just horrific grief. Yeah. And and we can't do anything to relieve them of that. Yeah. Um, nobody should have to go through that. Right. Nobody, especially when it's a a, a crime 
that is 100% preventable. That's right. Because they had no business being here. Right. You know, um, and so Jesus. that has been the thing that I have picked up, my family has picked up, that's been our banner that we decided to fight on. And my husband and I, Bobby and I, uh, Ashley started traveling around, mm -hmm. trying to wake people up and knocking on doors to yeah. what is going on with our borders. Yes. Why is, you know, Americans are being killed. Yeah. And it was at that time that we found out how often this happens, mm. that there are hundreds of thousands of us. There, there are a lot of uh, angel families uh, that President Trump, until President Trump actually recognized us yeah. and we didn't have anyone prior to him to right. we didn't even have a name or, or anything yeah. um president trump was the one that actually deemed us mm -hmm. as angel families and angel parents yeah. um but prior to that we were just people that this has happened to yeah and then once we joined the angel families we found out just how many there's many many more and there's more that we are unaware of yeah because they're they're in grief and they yeah. may never come out and never get help, but yeah. it, it turns your entire world upside down. I can only imagine. So, and you don't want other families to go through. I don't want another mother to cry. Of course, right. Can you share with us what your experience was like when you were going before the state house, before you even started to run, just the advocacy, the groundwork that you had, the hard work that you had been putting in in, this, in the, the state house, uh, right here in Florida, to petition them for, you know, E-Verify and, mm -hmm. you know, all of the legislation that you are, have been, you know, instrumental in helping to push through. So, um, first I want to say, you know, there are a lot of people running in just, you know, not just here in Florida, but I'm, I just mean in general. People are running. And many times they have their, their own agendas and it has... Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with we the people. But this woman right here, not only do I support her, obviously, because she's fantastic, but she has put in the work way before she decided to run, which makes her so qualified for this position. So can you can you tell us everything that you were able to help get done and the obstacles? Because this is what you guys want. You really need to listen to the obstacles that came not just from the Democrats, but from Republicans when you were trying to push through legislation. Can you tell us oh, about sure. that? sure. Um, you know, the greatest thing, I think, is when Trump uh, embraced us and gave us a face and gave us a name, um, and then to have the best governor in the entire United States. Absolutely. You know, we can say that with 100% certainty because Bats. we have all worked with him. <laughs> yeah. we've, we've sat across from him. We've yeah. met his wonderful wife, Casey. Yeah. He's a wonderful family man. Yes. Um, and he's a defender of all of us. That's of right. all Floridians. Yeah. And he, you know, regardless of whether what party you stand on, he still defends you. He That's still right. is defensive of, of protecting um, Floridians period yeah I mean he's very fair about that and um, what we did is we decided we started a foundation uh, in Brandon's name the Brandon Randolph Michael Foundation mm -hmm. and uh, we utilized that to just help other families yeah. even if it's just to travel to where they are mm -hmm. to speak to them to just say you're not alone yeah um, or to travel to DC to mm -hmm. uh, speak with our sheriffs yeah um, and it's been really, it's been a good thing. But then I also knew uh, once our governor, we connected with our governor, mm -hmm. DeSantis here, we just mm -hmm. love him to pieces, yeah. um, that he embraced us and he said, I wanna hear what your family's going through. Mm -hmm. I wanna know what you've encountered. So we sat down around a table yeah. with sheriffs and we, we discussed what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, we told the story of what happened with our son. And I, you know, I looked at him and I could see tears in his eyes. I mean, uh -huh. he was, he's he's a strong man. Mm -hmm. A big guy. A big guy. People yeah. don't realize <laughs> Sanchez is not, he's a big guy. So yeah, yeah. I could see how, how big and, you know, tough he is to see him tear up. That's oh, all yeah. moving. You know, and I was, immediately I recognized this guy really cares. Yeah. He really wants to hear what we have to say after being brushed off so many times. Yeah. Because I understand that we had went to D.C., we went to Nancy Pelosi's office, us and many uh, other 
angel families. Yeah. Because at that time, they were saying when Trump was in office that there's no emergency at the border. Oh, there's right. no emergency. You remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we had all of our children's pictures. Mm -hmm. You know, you come and tell us, our dead children mm -hmm. who are no longer here because of, of our lack of enforcing the borders. Yeah. Um, you come and tell us there's no emergency at the border. Right. Um, and of course, she, we never saw her. So, and know. not only did you not see her, what did she do? Oh, Capitol Police was yeah. called. Oh, so she called the police. So that's what they do. On, a, on an American constituent. Maybe yeah. not in her district, but she's still an American constituent. And we had a, one of the family members was one of her constituents from her district. So, so she was she was calling the so police she on, her her own, yeah, <laughs> on her own on her own constituents who had a legitimate reason to be there. We yeah. all had. I mean, we were not, uh, uh, you know, overly vocal or, or screaming or hollering at any of Violent. that. You know, no, <laughs> very peaceful. Mm -hmm. But we just waited on her to come out. Yeah. And you tell us there is no emergency, right. and the room was full of us. So after doing all of that, which we knew, we quickly realized we're not getting anywhere with that. Yeah. So. Um, we are, we worked with our governor and the very first thing we did is we went to, uh, Okaloosa County, I believe, and we sat around a round table with other sheriffs mm -hmm. and our governor and we talked about, uh, immigration reforms. Mm -hmm. We talked about what can we do. Yeah. And the governor at that time was, uh, looking at the 287G program. Mm -hmm. He presented that, and it was later deemed and re renamed the Warrant Service Officers Program. And what that does is it allows uh, our local law enforcement to act as ICE agents yeah. because they're the ones who encounter the illegals yeah. you know, more often. It's not going to be uh, the, uh, the ICE agents. Mm -hmm. It's going to be our local sheriff officers yeah. and JSO officers. That's so, right. Yeah, he wanted to. He has a he has this innate ability to just foresee things that are coming. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know how he does it. Yeah, you know, but he's he does uh, have that ability mm -hmm. to see that we're going in this direction. I'm going to be ahead of that. Yeah, and and so um, that's a great leader. That's oh a, yeah, that yeah, is a great that's, leader. That's a great leadership skill. Oh yes. Yeah. And so we traveled around uh, with him some to talk about our story, to tell our story over yeah. and over, um, to get our sheriffs awakened to, mm -hmm. you know, we are real people. Yeah. I'm not, a, you know, a statue sitting here. I'm not talking about somebody else's story. I'm mm -hmm. talking about our son. Right. Who deserves to still be here. That's right. So um, we worked with him on that. And then for his first state of the state, he featured our story, mm -hmm. our, son, our son Brandon's story, our family story, and that wow. was just amazing. As wow. you know, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a quite unbelievable to sit there and hear the governor say your name. It's like, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and then, you thank know... Thank you for being there with me. Oh that, my goodness. I wouldn't have had it any other way. I, like, I loved it. <laughs> I enjoyed every minute yeah. of it. I'll tell you what. And oh, it's, wow. it's just... It changes your life. It does. I remember um, just sitting there and looking at you, and I was like, wow, if your it's dad could see you. Oh, gosh. Don't make if your dad out. could see <laughs> this baby girl. Yeah. Um, so after the state of the state, um, we again, uh, the governor wanted, he tells you what he wants. Mm -hmm. I want on my desk, I want a ban on sanctuary cities. Mm -hmm. I want E-Verify to be mandatory. So uh, I worked with our state legislators mm -hmm. in the House and in the Senate, and I spoke in the House and in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And it's not, if, if people know, bills have to um, be heard several times mm -hmm. because the language has to be brought together. We have to agree on the language of, yeah. of how the bill is written and, and what it says, um, and it has to bounce back and forth for that. So we're talking about speaking not just one time, mm -hmm. but over and over the worst day of your life. Mm. Um, and people can, you know, it's amazing to me that there are people who just make light of that. Uh, it's not an easy thing. Right. <clears throat> it is not a thing that 
I don't no, I don't think parents want to do. I would mm-hmm. much rather prefer to have our son here. Right. And be course. oblivious to everything going on. Yeah. But I have an option. I got a choice. I can either pull the covers over my head. Yeah. Or I can come up and, and let his legacy continue on and That's speak right. out and with hoping that other lives will be saved. Yeah. Other That's parents so would not have to go through this. Right. Um and so just speaking before our legislators, and I can tell you, you know, some of the legislators are sitting there just looking at me like I had three heads. Wow. This is common sense to me. It is. I mean, where did they go? I mean, <laughs> you know, so, you know, just their response and yeah. having to look beyond that. Yeah. With your heart shattered already. Right. Um, yeah, to go before the people who are supposed to be representing mm-hmm. us and the callousness just straight up knowing just callous yeah before i can't even imagine i'm sure you wanted to jump across the table and oh my goodness I, what, I, I was like <laughs> you know this this is my child right we're not talking about a stranger this mm-hmm. is my child yeah and just yeah. like they are no defensive of their their children yeah I'm defensive of a mind right and his memory deserves respect that's and honor. right that's right um and so, yeah, you know, it, it really upsets you. Mm-hmm. And how dare they when, I, you know, I pay their salary. That's you right. You pay their salary. That's right. They work for us. Absolutely. I mean, we, we can't lose sight of that. And to sit across from a table and they're blowing bubbles with their gum, uh-huh. I mean, and not taking this seriously and not having a heart. Um, because if you're a parent, surely that would touch it. Yeah. So, you know, that is what we, we encountered just wow. going to. I, I mean, just, you know, we've got, you know, people with straws, just throwing straws at us or whatever. And it's just, it was just the silliness of standing up for what is right. But right. we have to stand up. That's we right. have to, somebody has to stand up. Yeah. And so we knew that E-Verify was going to be a different type of fight. Yeah. Um, so uh, we spoke again. I spoke again in the House and in the Senate. Mm-hmm going back and forth, back and forth. And unfortunately, they did not, uh, the legislators did not, they sort of watered down Mm -hmm. that bill. Yeah. And I was disappointed because I knew that we could do better. Right. There's more work to be done. And I I believe uh, having traveled with the governor all over to the villages, and Mm -hmm. we've been everywhere, we we were there when the bill was signed, banning yeah. sanctuary cities. So yeah. I love to say I, we have one of those blue markers that yeah. he used to, to sign the bills. What an honor. Wow. Um, but we've traveled with mm-hmm. him just, just helping to get this legend and helping to, and we would speak over and over and over yeah. and over and over and over again. And he was always very gentle with us, mm-hmm. our governor, and caring and looking yeah. us in his eyes mm-hmm. and in, in our eyes mm-hmm. and um, just paying attention to what we were saying and how were we doing, yeah. you know? And so I've had that, that honor of doing that. I've had the privilege of being mm-hmm. asked uh, to just come with the governor. Yeah. Uh, and I tell them anything he needs, I'm there. Yeah. I because, feel like that too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who would not want to right. be able to stand next to and share the podium yeah. with the greatest governor in America yeah. because he is a man uh, that believes in fighting. That's right. And so just knowing that there was still a lot of work to be done. Yeah. There's still a lot of work, not just with uh, immigration. Of course, that's it's definitely a lot of work to be done there. Yeah. But we fell short on even um, the parental rights bill. I think that yeah. we need to send that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, all the way to 12th grade. Me because too. it should never be a conversation right. that teachers need to have with students. Mm-hmm. It belongs in the hands of the parents. Absolutely. I believe in um, even the constitutional carry. Yeah. Not being able to get that passed, I, I don't quite get that. Yeah. You know, and I recognize I'm not in that seat yet. Yeah. So things look different when you're sitting there and True. you're faced with different things yeah. and all of that. However, I do know that that should have been passed. Right. I mean, he has a foresight. He mm-hmm. is the governor. I trust And we his have a, Repu- a majority Republican uh, legislator. Yeah, we do. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious. If we are saying that we're conservatives, then why is it so hard for conservative wow. values to be made law? I mean, if these were Democrats, they would be pounding in 
every single law that they possibly could. And then when we get, you know, Republicans have majorities, they don't know what to do. And then they wonder why people are upset when it's like, you know, what are we supporting? Why are we giving you our yeah. money? Or why are we donating to your campaigns? Why are we, you know, um, going out here voting for you? When we vote for you, you get an office and you vote with the Democrats or you put you you kill bills. You don't push forward uh, conservative agendas. So can you speak to uh, that? You know, really, just quite frankly, pisses me off because, <laughs> you know, as a new per I still consider myself relatively new, you know, to the con to the Republican Party, um, always a conservative, but new to the party. And, you know, on the inside, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I'm, I'm confused as to why. We have, even here in Duval, we have a majority Republican city council. Y'all gonna trip on this. We have a majority Republican city council, but we have three new taxes in one year and one more coming down the pipeline with COVID money. Explain, make that make sense. You know, and on top of that, we have a bathroom bill that was, we have all kind of stuff. The bathroom bill that was passed with majority Republican city council. We have all types of things being pushed through with majority Republican leadership. And it makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. And I tell you, this is why I'm running in State House 16. I decided like the end of uh, last year, right mm -hmm. before Thanksgiving. Now, granted, all of the work that I had done mm -hmm. um, prior to, I never thought about running. Mm -hmm. It was never in my head to run. Yeah. I just wanted to make a difference. Mm -hmm. I wanted Brenda's uh, life mm -hmm to have meaning yes. to it for people who never met him, right. you know, yeah. that his life didn't matter. Yeah. You know, they were taunting that on the left, but when it comes to something that they cannot control the narrative of, mm. we don't exist. Right. So right. Um, good. I decided, uh, you know, after the election, okay, I've got to do something. Yeah. There's more to do. Yeah. Uh, who better than me? Because you're not going to win a debate with me. I can tell you that. That's not, true. <laughs> That is an absolute fact. Don't even try. You're not you're not going to be able to convince me off of the edge because I believe that that's what we have to have now mm -hmm. is we must have fighters. Yes. I mean, if Donald Trump did not show us anything else is number one, that you don't have to be part of this systematic uh, establishment mm -hmm. that's been groomed and picked by them. OK, it's your time now. Yeah. You've been sitting there long enough, so it's your time. So, yeah. OK, you can run now. No. I, he showed us that you can be somebody who cares and loves this nation, mm -hmm. regardless of the shade of your skin. Mm -hmm. And you can run for That's even right. president of the United States. Yeah. Imagine that. And they didn't think that he they laughed at him. Yeah. You know, so he showed us that. Mm -hmm. And and it's true, mm -hmm. because regardless of, you know, of, of the adversity that I faced mm -hmm. and still face yeah. because I decided to run at the level, at the state level mm -hmm. that I decide that I could have the most impact in. Yeah. I mean, I've been speaking in the state house. Yeah. I've been uh, meeting and, and talking to and dealing with things on a federal level. Yeah. So why not? Yeah. And why not me? You know, they, they'll, they'll say, Kion, this is what I, I, I know them to say. They'll say, it's not your time, you wow. know? Or they'll say, you don't have experience. Or, you know, they will say, well, you know, we have a bench. So basically, go oh, warm wow. the bench until we decide, you know, the powers that be, the establishment, until they decide that it's time for you to run. Um, does that sound familiar? It, you? Yeah, I've lived it. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I mean, when you, you can feel it. I'm, here's the thing is that we have more blank. Republicans right here in Jacksonville wow. due to a lot of work that you did Thank when you, you, it really is. And you. <laughs> and anywhere else in the United States. Yeah. So we need to capitalize. The wise thing should be let's capitalize on that. Yeah. Let's capitalize on the fact that um, we have black, strong black conservatives mm -hmm. right here. We're not talking about jelly bags. Right. You know, yeah. but we have strong black conservatives right here in this city. What can we do? How can we help them? Yeah. But that's not been my experience. My yeah. experience has been where I, I get no support. Yeah. You know, I I don't exist all of a sudden. Now, right. when I was out helping the bills pass, oh, oh yeah. the greatest thing is oh. sliced bread. But once I put my foot in there yeah. because of what you said, 
you know, I believe it's, that's part of it. Then, you know, it's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. And one thing that um, I can say is that my parents raised me to never, ever limit yourself. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and then uh, I also I worked with a lady. Um, her name is Nadine Gremling. I just met with her a little while ago, yeah. a few, you know, a few days ago. And I remember her telling me she was a, a woman business owner mm -hmm. at that time. And she told me the sky is the limit. Don't mm -hmm. ever let anybody just limit you. Right. You have the ability. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Jump off that cliff. Yeah. Don't worry about the parachute that yeah. they try to tell you will or will not open. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know. And so take a risk. Yeah, take yeah. a risk. Yeah. And it's worth the risk. Mm -hmm. Our son was worth the risk. Absolutely. And and there's no one that's gonna speak to issues pertaining to immigration and school chores. There's no one that's gonna fight mm -hmm. like I will fight. That's we are right. tight out of our I mean, just out of being able to live here. Yeah. And Jacksonville is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Why can't we get constitutional carry passed? Yeah. Why can't we? I mean, even the maps that the uh, governor wanted to get approved, mm -hmm. he was fought on that. Yeah. So when they say now was not your time, this is my time and this That's is my right. season because no one can convince me what we have endured as a family and where God has guided me, mm. where we've been guided has not been by his hand mm. and it's not for such a time as this. Amen. So when people say, let's go, Brandon, I hear let's win this for Brandon. Ooh. I love it. So let's go. Brandon got, has a whole nother meaning. A right? whole nother meaning for me. Wow. And oh it's God, for such goodness. a time as this, who this would have known except for God? Yeah. You know, and uh, so I want a little girl to be able to look back and say, if Kion Michael did it, mm -hmm. I can do it. That's right. You know, I'm yeah. able to say if Jennifer Carroll can do it, mm. I can do it. That's right. You know, it's a sad thing that the last like uh, female conservative that we've had at the state level was Jennifer Carroll. And how long ago was that? Wow. It's been a long time. It has. Yeah. It's really sad for a city that is very diverse. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the mistakes that has been made um, by the party here is not recognizing that we are here. Yeah. And we ain't going nowhere. We're not going nowhere. <laughs> Listen, we That's got a right. voice. That's right. And we're able to shake and move some things. And, yes. and the fact is, is that, you know, the, the cap has been taken off. Mm -hmm. We're not going back in. That's right. We're not going to sit on a bench. No. We are not going to be disenfranchised. That's and we're right. not going to be held back. I mean, we just saw this with Kathy Barnett. Yes. She really went through some stuff. She did. She's a veteran. A oh veteran. She is a product. You know, her mother was raped and, and had her, her anyway. You know, my God. And talking well, about... All of the issues that are surrounding us today with uh, these pro-abortion crazy lunatics, um, yeah. you know, you know, they're pushing this, these crazy agendas. And then you have candidates, you know, that are have proven themselves to be fighters for the people and the party that tells you that they're for the people mm -hmm. won't support you. Will not support you. It will make it difficult for you. Yeah. The you party know? that says that for free speech will tell you, don't say that. Don't say, oh, you know, you can't, you can't use the word rhino. We can't say that. And, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, I know me and I certainly know <laughs> you. When people tell us like, oh, don't do something. That's basically like saying, just, that's just go do, do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> because especially when it's the right thing to do, it's one thing to be corrected and, and, you know, admonish when you're wrong but it's a whole nother thing when you are doing what's right and you have people that are trying to tell you not to do what's right it's, so it's something else it's crazy and it's real yeah i mean i i had heard about it mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you get in and yeah. you recognize you know what there is an establishment oh yes and they're not for the grassroots they're not for people everyday people yeah and so it makes it tougher for you. But, you know, you. I stand on my standards. Mm -hmm. I stand on my values. I stand on uh, the way that I was raised, which is we are all created mm -hmm. equal and that God has given us our inevitable rights, that's, that's you right. know, and freedom and life and the pursuit of happiness. That's right. It belongs to all of us. Mm -hmm. 
regardless of the shade of our, our skin. Yeah. And that the Republican Party, the best thing they can do is recognize that the party's face has changed. Yeah. It is no longer just, you know, just a bunch of old white guys. No, <laughs> the party phase has changed yeah. and we have something to say. We've got work to do. Yeah. And um, so just the, the idea that we have a lot of candidates across mm -hmm. Florida, across the United States for the first time. I've never seen so many yeah. uh, people of color that are running for office. Yeah. And it makes us just so happy. Yeah. Because, you know, we now know we can do this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I want to say, too, because I hear this a lot, you know, they'll say, oh, well, th this this person is embedded or they don't have the experience or they don't, you know, all of these excuses on why, you know, certain candidates should be uh, shouldn't be supported. And I will say I've seen it not just with hmm. because you're black. I've seen it done to white folks. I've seen it done to Hispanic folks. I've seen it done to anybody who's not a part of their little group who had they have like these legacy you know mm -hmm. their granddaddy was in congress they're in congress their grandson you know it's like these leg they're just passing it down which means that it's not really about the people it's really about just for that person the the they're they're running because it's legacy not because they're the best person for for the job and that's what we need to be looking at. Republicans say that all the time. Oh, well, don't pick a person because, you know, they are uh, because of their skin color, because of, of this, or that. Pick the person that's the best fit for the job. Exactly. Do that. <laughs> Why don't you do that? <laughs> There's an idea. <laughs> there is an idea. You know, so I really just appreciate you running. I appreciate your boldness, your fierceness and your not won't back down spirit absolutely you know and and just on brandon's legacy and his you know so his name and his what he went through so it doesn't so it's not in vain so i just commend you and i 100 percent support you um why don't you let everybody know where they can go to donate to support your campaign and um uh make sure and Make sure you tell them how to spell your name so they know yes. who to vote for. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. You know, there's so much that we could have talked about. Oh, yeah. Because I'm telling you, we could have went into a whole lot. Right. Because we, as a party, we've got we've got a long way to go. Yeah. You know, um, I can now understand why we have some uh, people within our own race mm -hmm. who really are conservatives and they may stay with the Democrat Party. Yeah. Because to switch over you know, we are not, they're not being embraced, yeah. you know, as mm -hmm. long as, as long as they stay in a corner, mm -hmm. you know, and I expect it box, then everything's okay. Yeah. But when you come out of that box, mm -hmm. then, then there's a problem. Right. And it's, it's really sad because our governor is not like that. Our right. governor is very inclusive. He, he's Absolutely. very, um, he believes in people of all shades and of, yeah. of all colors mm -hmm. and all creeds. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, it is. That's that's where we are. Yeah. I mean, and that's the reality. And I'm not afraid to say it because right. it's something that needs to be talked about. It needs to be said. We need to not, you know, be uh, ignorant of the fact that this is really happening. Yeah. And it needs to be part of our, our conversation. Yeah. It needs to be part of uh, something that we can strive to. Yeah. To better the party. And we need to have a voice. That's we need right. to be able to be given a platform and not removed to speak at a club because someone else wants to speak. Who thinks their voice? That's a true means story. That's that a is true a true story. story that actually happened to me. Yeah. Um. So, and I'm a fighter. I'm one that I will say it. If if people don't want to be told to their face that you're wrong, you may not want to do it. <laughs> To me, you may not want to do it where I know about it yeah. because I, I believe in accountability. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been our problem as yeah, a party is that sure. people get in office. They're not held accountable. Yep. They make these votes and and it's against our conservative views mm -hmm. and values. And no one holds them accountable. But I say, hold me accountable. Hold it true. Hold me true. Because yeah. I believe we're going to cross that finish line. Yeah. I truly do believe. In I spite of all it. the resistance. Yes. In spite of the money being held back. Mm -hmm. In spite of, you know, in spite of all the little dicey games. Yeah. I believe we will cross that finish line yeah. because we've got a mission. Yeah. My name is Kayan Michael. 
And that is spelled K-I-Y-A-N-M-I-C-H-A-E-L. Yeah. Again, that's K-I-Y-A-N-M-I-C-H-A-E-L. And you can get a hold of me. You can go to my website, kayanmichael.com. And you can uh, find out everything about me. You can Google me because I've been all over America. I've been to Iowa. We just left a uh, meeting with the governor of Texas, Greg mm -hmm. Abbott, my mm -hmm. husband and I, because we believe you have to reach across the table and work with these other states. Yeah. Because the border crisis is definitely, it, it's affecting us all. I yeah. mean, right here in Ponte Vedra Beach, they yeah. had a lady that was working for the clerk of courts. And she was giving illegals driver's licenses. What? Right here in Ponte Vedra. She was wow. helping. And she was giving them answers. She was giving them answers to the test so they could pass the test. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, I thought that kind of stuff only existed like in South Florida. Like I was saying earlier, you know, that's what they do. They have a person mm -hmm. who will just, you know, help them get driver's license and stuff when they come over here. But why well, did not know that, that? But see, you, you just don't realize how close this stuff is in your backyard. Yeah. And that leads me to say. It is time for conservatives to fight back yes to stand up for what you believe in if there if, if you have never if the, if the cover has never been pulled back it is pulled back now and you can there is no more no excuse you can see exactly what is going on and if you think that these people democrat or republican anybody that's a part of that establishment if you think they really care about you and your family and what you're going through you better wake up it is not time to be, oh, I'm voting for them because they're my friend. Or I've known little Johnny since he was two. You know, you don't know what that person has grown up to be. And it is time to stop voting for people just because they have an R by their name and not really looking into what they stand for. We have to stop doing that. Just stop it. Just cut mm -hmm. it out. It's, it's not time for the games. We are so beyond that. We are so past that. Yes. And if you don't do it, I will tell you, you will see, it's specifically here in Jacksonville, in Florida, you will see your city crumble. And I, I, don't, I don't mean to be, hyper, I'm not trying to be hyperbolic, but take a look around. Take a look yeah. around at how these things happen little by little. If you do not stop these people, they won't get stopped. And it is up to you, the voters, to do it. So vote for Kion. If you are in... Um, uh, District 16 in Florida, make sure you cast a vote for Kion Michael because you know that you are getting a fighter. And I will put all of her links in the description box below so you can follow her, support her campaign. It doesn't matter where you live. This, this broadcast will reach uh, tons of people, thousands of people. If you could give to her campaign, I will put that link below to make sure that she is supported because she absolutely needs your support because she's not getting it, just quite frankly, no. from the local GOP um, or the, the powers that be. You know, I hate to even call them powerful because they're a bunch of cowards, but she's not getting that support. Not all of them. Not all of them. Not but all of them. Yeah. <laughs> many of them. Um, just look at the track record. Look at where, why we are here where we are today. These people have been in office for a long time. Time for them to go. But anyway, I can rant and rave about that. But I will put all of the ways that you can support her in the description box below. Kion, thank you so very much for coming on and being my first in-studio guest. Yay! Yay! And my election date is August 23rd. Do not forget, Kion like the pepper. <laughs> and <laughs> I need you to remember to vote for me, share my information. You can find me on Facebook. Um, I'm on Instagram, but I'm not sure how to work Instagram. Okay. I, I need a little help with that one. <laughs> and thank you for supporting the Keisha King show. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much for having me. It's been wonderful. You, you know, when you say Kion like the pepper, that is very fitting because she is feisty <laughs> and she ain't going to take no stuff. No, I'm not breaking <laughs> down and you're not going to scare me. I've already been through hell. You guys have heard it, yeah. what we've gone through as a family. So yeah. there's nothing worse. Yeah. It's, not, it's, a, it's only up from here That's right. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And uh, I will represent you. And I am for the people. It's we the people. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Kayan. Oh, thank you. We will see you later. Make sure you guys uh, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe, like, comment. 
Uh, let us know what you think about what we're talking about. You know, we really want to hear from you uh, so we can create better content. We want to hear from you so we can uh, see what your thoughts are about, you know, the people that we bring on the show. So please comment, like, share, 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 yeah. and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.